Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm super pumped that you are taking time out of your very busy, crazy nonstop schedule to join me on this episode where today we are going to break down this standard. You ready? Let's go. We are working on MA. Dot five dot NSO dot one point one MA stands for math, five stands for fifth grade, NSO stands for number sense and operations. The one means that we're working on place value, and then the second one means it's the first standard in place value. Okay, by the way, this document that I am marking up all over and going to be going over with you, this is definitely not something that I created, this is something that the Florida Department of Education releases publicly so that everybody can see the the clarifications the intentions of the standards and basically i'm just walking you through how i process and work through these standards breaking them down in order to create the resources for you with taking on the best so let's go over it this one says to express which means either writing or explaining how the value of a digit in a multi-digit number with decimals to the thousandths changes if the digit moves one or more places to the left or to the right. So we're going to be focusing on digits. And first of all, digits are numbers that are zero through nine, a single number. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And when you were thinking of digits, helping our students to understand what a digit is, just like words are made up of letters, numbers are made up of digits. So we're going to be looking at the digits and where they are located. And they could go all the way up to basically the millions place or all the way down to the thousandths place, which if we're looking at our decimal, we've got the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So three places past the decimal. And how those digits change if we move them into different places. So for instance, if you have a number that is 32 and you're taking this three, this three is in the tens place. But if we move this number to the thousandths place, it changes dramatically. The value of this number changes. Okay, now this section right here, related benchmarks and horizontal alignment, these are other fifth grade standards that are related to the standard that we're going over today. You can see there's a lot, so I'll just kind of point out what each one is. This NSO.2.4, that's exploring multiplication and division of decimal numbers. 2.5 is where we are multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth. Then we move on to our AR standards. 2.1 is numerical expressions and mathematical descriptions. 2.2 is more of an order of operations. 2.3 is true or false with order of operations. And I'll kind of, I'll show you how in an example that they provide in this document, how that order of operations will kind of come into play. Also, we have 5.m.1.1, that is measurement conversions, which will be multi-step measurement conversions. And M2.1 will be multi-step word problems with money. You can see all of which are using decimals. So that's why it's related here. This one, we really gotta make sure we've got it because we're going to be using the understanding of place value throughout. Now in fourth grade, where are they coming from? Well, in fourth grade, we're working with multi-digit whole numbers, so no decimals with this kind of standard in fourth grade. 
and we're only going one place left or right. So it's either 10 times less or 10 times greater. And then in sixth grade, they'll be moving up to multiplying and dividing positive numbers with decimals. Okay, so this is the purpose and instructional strategies section of this document. And I'm just going to point out some of the things that jumped out at me. First of all, using base 10 block manipulatives will be helpful. But in taking on the best, we're actually going to really focus on place value charts to help students understand the relationship between digits in different places. So you will definitely see some place value charts popping up. I highly encourage you to have place value charts in your room. That way students can see constantly the, the relationship between the different places. I made a note with common misconceptions and errors that students might get confused of what one-tenth of means. Now this shouldn't be your students first time seeing one-tenth of. Well you know what it might be because as of recording this, this is going to be our first year entering into the best standards and this might be the first time that fifth graders are seeing this but just know that the fourth grade standard before we do go into what one-tenth of means but just clarifying it says that teachers can connect what one-tenth of means and that one tenth of means 10 times less. So moving your digit to the right or dividing by 10, moving your digit to the right. They're all the same thing. Here, you know, as a student and, and honestly in the past as a teacher, you can see in 155 that I've done the same kind of thing, but I've talked about moving decimals or moving digits to the right and to the left. But this standard really makes a point to say like, why are you shifting to the left or to the right? What is happening to the value of the number when you do that? And I love that. So you're going to see a lot of that in um, taking on the best one. I'll show you in just a second. Then here with the instructional task and items, I wrote down here that most of your examples will probably look something like this, where we're seeing explicitly, here's a decimal number um, 10 times, seeing these, these vocabulary words, one thousandth of, you know, stuff like that. But here is more of a real world example of, you know, we have candy and how much, if, if this candy costs 18 cents, how much would 10 pieces cost? How much would 100 pieces cost? How about a thousand? And I love that they're incorporating how you can see that in the real world there too. One thing to point out is that for problems like this down here in the instructional item, and this is something that we definitely target in taking on the best, but just making sure that you're taking the numbers, taking the, the words off. And I show students how to transfer that over into numbers and symbols. So if we were to do that here, where it says 34 thousandths is 10 times the value of 34, making it 34 thousandths is 10 times 34. And this connects then to those true or false equation standards where we're solving both sides. So 10 times 34 on this side would be 340, right? Which is not the same as this one right there. Those that would not be an equal equation and breaking it down with each one of those. So those are just some tips I have there for that one. Now let's go ahead and see what you have access to that strategically aligns with the standard that we're working on today. So if you're at McCarthy Math Academy, you make sure you go to members, enter here, taking on the best, which grade are we working on? Fourth grade, not fourth grade, we're on fifth grade, but I was just thinking that I do wanna show you um, a fourth grade standard that might help you to explain what's happening in fifth grade. So hopefully I'll remember to go back to that. NSO, that 1.1, and actually everybody has access to all of the resources here because this is the free trial as well. So even if you've only signed up for the bronze resources for this one, you have access to all of them, which is pretty cool. So the bronze resources, you have one, two, three, four video lessons and four printable pages that go with the each video lesson. So the first one, before we even kick off breaking down the value of digits, we're explicitly teaching the different places here. So you can see here's the printable where we're going over what is this place? What's the name of each place? And then what's the value of these digits in this place? And talking about the word digit and just getting them reacclimated with the vocabulary that they need to be successful with the standard, just giving them a sense of foundation. So when we jump into 10 times greater or less, then they will be good to go. So I, what I did here was 
the fifth grade standard says one or more. So we're studying just in this video, just the one place, 10 times greater or less. So as you can see here, look, we're using place value charts like what's recommended in the, the benchmark clarifications. And we will place the number, for instance, 47 and 51 hundredths into this place value chart. And then we're creating a number that is 10 times greater and writing a number that is 10 times less. And same thing here, 10 times greater or one tenth of. You can see here, 10 times less or one tenth of. So clearly showing there, we'll mention in the video that 10 times less is the same thing as one tenth of. And you can see here, I chose to put it into words, which also will place it into a fraction form too. Okay, so lots of good stuff there. Then for the next video, it's how many times greater or less? So we're placing the number 478 in the place value chart, four, seven, eight. And now write a number that's 10 times greater than that. Write a number, I'm sorry, write a number that's 100 times greater than that. Write a number that's 10 times greater than that. Write a number that's one 1,000th one of that number. So we're practicing all of that with two examples. And then true or false equations. This is, I'm glad that I took time to create this. This is similar to that one that we were talking about in the benchmark with the example that they gave you where we're transferring this statement into numbers and symbols and determining is that true or is that false? So taking time to do that in the video lessons. And if you are like, I don't even know how to get started teaching that, you can absolutely watch the video lessons beforehand. That way you feel like a rock star and ready to go out and teach that too. Then everyone has access to the silver resources for this standard which is cool. So you have printables, you have an answer key, and this math misconception mystery video, which I'll talk about in just a second. I'm clicking on the printables and you can tell, this just kind of takes everything for the standard and just says, here it is, right? So we have the video lesson, you know, because it has a video icon, another video lesson. And then after we finish the video lesson, having some extra practice with that very similar to what we just did in the video lesson. That way students can build that confidence muscle and master the skills that they need. Video lesson, extra practice, video lesson with true or false, extra practice with true or false. And then here is the math mission. So similar to that one about the candy and it costing 18 cents, here's an example in the real wor world where Yulia is purchasing supplies to make bracelets for her business. It costs 12 cents to make each bracelet. She sells each bracelet for $2.50. So here we're helping Yulia to fill out this whole thing and we're taking all the knowledge that we learned from the standard and placing it into a math mission. Also, you can think of it like a math task. So you have that ready for you to use. And then this math misconception mystery video this is the printable that goes with the video lesson. Again, there's that video icon. And the Math Misconception Mystery, I walk through the entire process in the video lesson, but I'll introduce the problem for your students. They can solve that problem either by themselves or with their groups. And then four characters will solve that same problem, which the characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes. Three of those characters will make a mistake that students tend to make with this kind of problem and only one character will have the correct answer, the most reasonable answer. So as they're watching the character solve the problem, they can jot down some notes here. And then at the end, they'll fill out this detective report and say who has the most reasonable answer and why. And then for the other characters, what did, what did those characters do that was correct? Shedding light on the positive part, not just focusing on the error, but there were some things that they did do correct. And what do they need to know for next time? So that's fun. You can use that. Here's your answer keys. Um, and here's the math misconception mystery video. You can full screen it right there. And then for the gold resources, click here. Everybody has access to this as well. Um, the only thing that you might not have access to is the McCarthy Math 155 videos. If you do not have the gold membership, but I'll show you what's behind there. So for the gold resources here, you'll have access to the mini assessment. I'll show you that. 
Here's a mini assessment, different kinds of problem types. You also have the answer key that's with it. The ad free version of the video that you're watching is right here. However, they are available. These videos are available on YouTube. Just one of the perks of having the gold plan is that you bypass all the ads that come with it from YouTube. Um, and then McCarthy Math 155 was the program that I created when we had the common core standards in Florida. We put our own spin on them, um, but now we've changed it to the best. So a lot of people asked me like, can we still have access to 155? And if you wanted that, yes. So fifth grade, let me see. Fifth grade, fifth grade. If you go, you can see here, there's all these units. I tell you how many lessons are in it. And then just kind of a preview as to what topics are under in each unit. So I'm just scrolling to, um, I think it's play, understanding place value. Let me see. Let me just show you though while we're here, the different units that are available. You can pause the video to look at it a little bit closer, but just so you can see, um, I'm going to go to unit four, understanding place value, because I'm pretty sure that if I scroll down, powers of 10. Okay, so while powers of 10 are not explicitly taught in the best standards, we do talk about hopping through the different place values here. So you can take a look like right here, this would be a good one hopping through place value, that might be a good one to preview and see if you can pull some of that extra practice from it. Um, these standards are not aligned to the best standards, but some of them do transfer over. We just don't go into any exponents now. So yeah, cool. All right, well, you have that if you choose to use it. <laughs> Okay, so that is the very first standard for fifth grade, 5.NSO.1.1. I hope that you understand now that we're changing the values of the digits, that we can go as far as we want. We can move one or more places going in either direction, and that with taking on the best, you have a lot of resources at your fingertips that are specifically aligned to this standard. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to help. And before you go, I want to remind you that what you choose to do every day with your life, it really does matter. We know that as teachers, but I'm just here to remind you of that because I know this profession, it can be super exhausting, super stressful, but I just want to like pull it back and say, this is one of the best professions out there that we really do have a chance to make an impact in our students' lives. And while we might not know how we make a difference, we have to trust that what we're bringing to the table every day, that being intentional with how we are guiding our students, that that really will make a difference later on. What I do now is because I had a teacher believe in me back in the day until I could believe in myself. I know you're working hard. I want you to make sure that you take time for yourself to disconnect from the teaching world and give yourself grace and give yourself the care that you need, the, the peace, the rest, the rejuvenation that you need to make sure that you can continue to bring it for your students. All right. Um, thank you for all that you do. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye everybody. Okay. So I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Okay. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right. For real now. Bye.